What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Level With You show, episode nine. My name is Wiley Olmstead. Today, I am joined by my good friends, Kenny Castro. Hi. And Anthony Dewart. I just ate a bunch of meat, and I'm very sweaty. All right, and we also have Tyler Hadley over here behind the booth. I just made all that meat that he ate. It was very good, very good. Thank it was you. really good. Thank you for the boneless ribs. I guess that's a thing. Nom, yeah. nom, 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 nom. Those are tits, thank you. <clears throat> so, guys, it's summertime. We've been, uh, you know, chilling outside a little bit, getting in some, soaking in the sun, jumping in the water, splashing around. No, nah, I just live in my basement. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been. I, I like the effort that you're putting on. Though. I mean, you're doing way more than I am. I wear black every day, and uh, I don't have any yeah, color. Yeah. I'm white why, as why me out here with the guns? I think the darkest it thing about just, my skin uh, is the hair. A coincidence, not planned or anything. I'm not showing off. He, he planned it. That I've been working yeah. out. You know, yeah. you guys, you've been hitting the weight hard. Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Yeah. I, uh, I appreciate the Spanish. My style. parents got this for me when they went down to Mexico, and I was like, "Cool, thanks, thanks, mom." Thanks for the gift. Appreciate yeah. the shirt. It's a good one. It's comfy. Yeah. So, um, any I, any summer activities yet for you guys at all? Oh God, huh? does drinking outside count? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I've done that. Okay. A couple times. Yep. Same here. That's about it. Round of fire. Ooh, ooh, yes, I did that last Friday. Yep. What's everybody's thoughts on bonfires? I love bonfires. You bonfires love are great. They're good, but I don't like the way you That was smell. one thing when I, I, I was in Texas that I was disappointed that we didn't have was a fire. I mean, considerably so because it's really hot down there already, so they don't really need a fire. True. But There's no trees or anything else to catch on fire down there. It's all just plain. <laughs> yeah. I like fires to an extent. I don't think it should be the whole night. Like, I think you should do because when after, I get to a point where while, I'm too drunk, I'm just like, okay, let's go do something else. <laughs> There's, it's, you can get too much of that smoke on you. Mm-hmm. I don't like smelling like it for the next. So, do days. you want to fire at the beginning of the night or at the end of the night? Beginning. Okay, so you want to go hang out at the fire, then come back inside and let the fire die and do whatever you want. Yeah, I, get, uh, I guess I'd, I'd prefer I like, that too, probably. I like ending the night with a fire. Eh, well, if I had a choice. Different strokes for different folks. You could do it every way. It's <laughs> your fire. Just put it's it. All about the left stroke. As I was saying, this is the Level With You show, a weekly video game podcast where we get together and talk about, you guessed it, video games. What's everybody been playing? I do like how the outline this week, uh, it flipped, and I was the only one that put something in, whereas every week before that, everybody else has put something in, and I've been the only one that hasn't put stuff in. Yeah, I didn't do as detailed of a job as I usually do on the outline, but thank no, that's you for, okay. for inserting that little bloodstained ritual of the night note. I did play that, buy that on online. I might have, may or may not have bought it on Amazon for 30 bucks. Oh yeah, 30? I did. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, thirty thirty dollars. I think it was like thirty one with Amazon Prime. That was pretty so good. I, I got it the next day. It was like one day shipping too. Tell me what oh, what platform are you playing it on? Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch. I've been mm-hmm. hearing some things about this Nintendo Switch bloodstained. Yes, it is very laggy. Uh, it lags a lot, especially in handheld mode. At least uh, it's the frame rate drops like considerably. Huh. The load times for certain areas. Or there was one part. Um, when I was in a level and I was trying to jump up through because uh, the screen transition is much like Legend, Legend of Zelda when you go to another tile but I was jumping up through a platform and it screen transitioned but it took like 30 seconds it wasn't like instantaneous oh I saw something about that on like Tech Foundry or something they were like saying like yeah look at this how long it takes to jump up to the next room yeah, yeah that's kind of it's crazy. bad because you do that and you're like oh okay and you forget that you have to hold the direction you want to go in because then if you forget you just go oh and you go right back down and that's another 30 seconds that's and shitty. I did that six times <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. But uh, what do you think? And otherwise, it's great. Other other than that, it's great. It's really good. If you like Castlevania, like Metroidvania games, it's totally a spiritual successor to Symphony of the Night, which I only played very little of. I uh, had the chance to buy it for PlayStation One a couple years back, and I didn't. And I'm very sad that I didn't take that offer. But this is very very good. And you can uh, you play as a cute, uh, hot gothic vampire chick. No, not Isn't vampire. It create your own character. It's um. You start as this girl named uh, Miriam. And she's like this, they call them the shard binders, and that's like uh, in the world, it takes place in like 1700s. And the shard binders are humans who were experimented on by the other group called the alchemists, or the alchemists of the world there, to combat the demons that were coming out of hell. And the shard binders are humans that have been implanted with these like mystical shard powers that let them use like certain, pretty much all the demons' powers. And then the thing is like, uh, it's brought up a lot, it's like, oh, if you overuse your shard powers, you're gonna get overtaken by the shard and have become a demon yourself. Huh, okay. And you plays this really hot girl with all these really cool tattoos, and you can change your hairstyle, and you get different hats and clothes to wear. Mm-hmm. It's very cool in that aspect. I love when a game lets you uh, change your aesthetic experience. I hear there's a pretty good uh, variety of kind of gameplay yeah. as well. Just like you, 
determining what your play style is? Pretty much. You have like a whole wide range of weapons. I was actually very surprised. You start off with a dagger and kung fu boots, which I was like, oh, it's that. And it's literally just kicking. So you can kick or you can use a little dagger. But then you quickly get a bunch of other weapons. Like I got a sword after that, like a long sword, a great sword. And if you played any other Castlevania game before this, it functions all the same. All the Pretty much most of the weapon animations function the same as like the other 2D Castlevanias, like Symphony of the Night. Um, the great sword it always says that like 90 degree downward swing angle mm-hmm. and the animation functions the same way. Um, the whips are still a little slow, they're pretty powerful, but the, I don't like the, it's got a weird curve to it. The arc when you hit it, it kind of goes like down and up, so you have to be really specific with your timing. So the weapon drops, are they um, specific to an area or are they random? Kind of random. Do you find a bunch of treasure, cha- uh, treasure chests are like all over the place? Um, it really rewards you for exploring, which is awesome. And you can have uh, the map kind of fills in itself as you explore or you can get like when you get towards the end of the first level i believe it's a ship um you can find the map and it fills out the rest of the map but uh it's just a white outline the blue inner part when you actually explore it you have to go and do that yourself but it's cool to kind of know what leads where and if you're just going to a dead end or but most of the time the dead ends will be save rooms which are really good because they're the only place you can recover your health and your mana gotcha but it's sweet, and you get little familiars. So you get live like a sword following me around right now. Like I killed the guy, and you, like it'll just randomly uh, drop shards. Um, so any of the enemies that you kill will drop different powers. It's not guaranteed, so it's kind of like a gambit every time. But um, kill a certain amount of enemies, they'll randomly drop either their ability, which is cool. So you can use their ability as magic, which you can map to the different buttons. Or if it's a certain familiar, it'll drop like it's summon, and they just always stay on you. How are the boss fights? Good. They're really good. Actually, the second boss was really hard. I died like six times. Okay. But it was really, like, if you can memorize their patterns and uh, predict where they're going to go, what moves he's going to use, and just don't really play recklessly, you'll be good. Nice. Well, I've been super pleased with the reaction the game has been getting. I think that nobody really expected it to uh, be as well-received as it was, considering the multiple delays, the... uh, you know, early impressions of it not being very good, the fact that it was released without being given to reviewers beforehand, and seems to be getting in like the eights and nines and, you know, a worthy follow-up to one of the best Metroidvanias of all time, Symphony of the Night. So I it kinda it's shaping up to be a, a must play. Yeah, at I least in my book. It. Yeah. I'm and looking I'll, for something to play. And I'll get it on PS4 and then we, we can compare and contrast. Mm, I'm sure your version will be a lot smoother. I'm hoping they patch it soon. Yeah, I wonder. Um, but we'll see. We shall see. What about you, Kenny? What have you been up to these past six or seven days? <clears throat> well, I just finished beating Rise, so Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I started a game on Game Pass called For the King. For the King. Yeah, I started playing that online with a buddy of mine from Florida. <clears throat> so it's a tabletop RPG um, roguelike. Okay. So we started playing it. We died our first two playthroughs, so that so you got to start all over. So it's permadeath. So permadeath. You nice. get anything? To, do you keep anything? So, it, they give you depending on if you beat like certain like mini bosses, you or clear like dungeon mini dungeons or dungeons, you get lore books. The lore books afterwards you can unlock like a new location, like a night, like a night um night store that only come, turns up when the when the day turn when the that day turns into night. So it'll then pop up and you can shop there at nighttime. Gotcha. And the nighttime lasts for four, four or five turns. So the time cycle is by turn, by rounds. So um, night lasts five rounds and daytime lasts like eight rounds. So you say it's a tabletop game. What do you really mean by that? Because it's like it's so a video they, game. They, they, re, they refer to it as a tabletop, you know, the game. Do you know if it originally was a tabletop game? I don't, I don't know okay. in that regard. I think it just has the aspects with the with the, um, the chance and how the map is set up. It's almost like a, like a tabletop game. Just presented that way. It's presented that way. So it's like a virtual tabletop game gotcha. you know, in, in its own way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. You know, is you it have co-op? Classes. It's, it's co-op. co-op. Okay. Yeah, it's co-op. You have classes. You have these generic classes at first. Um, blacksmith, hunter, um, herbalist, um, I think a bard or something like that. Mm. So it's Typical, interesting. like almost D&D. Exactly. So, and then you can unlock with the lore books more characters. More, more classes. Okay. So some of the better classes take like 18 lore books to unlock. Wow. Um, I think last time I, I unlocked a rare weapon a rare, a rare weapon for the bard um, and some locations so and can, a trainer. 
are you working towards beating it? Yes. So okay. slowly but surely, I know. So right now, we were doing really good on this one, this playthrough we're currently on right now. But our third character died, and so we. So when you're playing just two players instead of the maximum three, you can have a third character, which one of the two users will control that character as well. Mm -hmm. So that one died on us, and so. I really don't have too high, too much high hopes for for our, our playthrough now, because as we're getting further in and the enemies are becoming tougher, there sounds like a run has taken you a while. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, because as you play through, it's it's almost in its own way in an RPG. So you have to play out the story. So the story will take you here to this town, and then when you get to that town and do what they are asking you to do, it'll evolve and now you have to go to take out this tower this this boss's tower but to do that now you have to collect keys you know so then you have to go around the map so you're talking like keys. hours and hours and then if you die then you have to start, start all over, all over. kind of sounds like a civ game yeah. like more of an rpg centered civilization mm -hmm. slightly so it's definitely wasn't expecting myself to like it and i'm hooked so huh. I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying my best to so they have different scenarios as well so right now we're playing the base for the king scenario i'm hoping to beat that one at some point in time so then we can move on to the next one i think there's three story-based scenarios and there's a competitive scenario do you get anything for like beating the scenarios like anything for your characters or i'm hoping i will hoping a big chunk of lore books mm -hmm. because the lore books are the big thing like you unlock so many things and the, i was looking through some of the weapons like the rare weapons that you can unlock with these lore books and i'm like wow this would be a huge advantage if i could start off a playthrough with one of these weapons mm -hmm. you know gotcha. like huge advantage like i think one of the one i unlocked yesterday well, it does right right away twenty three damage, mm, and that's pretty high up. Sounds like it's high up. It's <laughs> high up. <laughs> like yeah, because right now we're running around with weapons that only do like ten, twelve. Gotcha. So you it's know? like one of those games that scales its uh, damage not in like Yu Gi Oh turns with like fifteen hundred, but like Magic: The Gathering of like oh the a really good monster is like a one four, pretty yeah, much yeah, like yeah. lower. So that's cool. Been playing that. I didn't expect myself to like it. You know, so didn't even. Who never turned, heard your it. friend turned you onto it? Yeah, he was like, oh, download it. Let's try and play it. And, you know. I hadn't been on the Xbox for a little bit, so I was like, "All right, let's play." I haven't played with you in forever, so nice. installed it. We it took it's a one gig. I think it's only like one or two gigabytes. So. Okay, that's not so bad. It's a small, small game. Like the, it's like almost like, sh like. How do you do know you if it's it? available on other platforms? I think it's on Steam. I, it, it might be on Steam. I was trying to see. I know. Does it have like a block? I think style? it actually. I think it may be even on the Switch right now. Oh, okay, sounds like a good Switch game. Yeah. Switch game. I'm uh, checking it out right now. <laughs> but uh, what kind of art style does it have, uh, Kenny? Is it like a blocky? Is it's like it slightly blocky. Slightly blocky? Okay. It's, slightly it's blocky. not like not like Minecraft blocky, but almost like it's abstract. Like nothing's fully a certain shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, everything has a lot of edges. Because I saw the right. art style too, and that's what drew me in to mm -hmm. like, the Steam profile page I'm yeah, pretty sure, a couple so, weeks back. And you could pick up the equipment depending on what you pick up. Like one, we beat the hangman, mm -hmm. and we beat him. We took his head, his his hood off, and, mm -hmm. I, and one of the characters couldn't equip it. Oh, that's pretty and cool. And get the stats, whatever stats it gives. So, oh, that's great. Nice nice little gameplay to it. And and cool. I, I like that it's got a neat color for our art style. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. It's like kind of like then, the blocky, and it's not like you. I mean, could, it's not like Minecraft blocky, but no, yeah, it's it, like it, good. It has a slight blockiness to it. Not okay. not full on Minecraft. Um, it's like Fortnite blocky. Yeah, so, blocky Fortnite. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Block Knight. Whatever. So, <laughs> so the the thing I like the most is that what I came to realize on the second playthrough, play after we we bombed the first one, was we jump in and I'm like, holy crap! Like I was strategizing. Okay, if it's over, if the town we got to get to is over here, we'll just head straight there come in mm -hmm. and like it's procedurally generated so now the town was closer That's but cool. then everything else was good that we were like used to used to or further away mm -hmm. as well i was like okay so there's no way to really strategize how location the, based. How, how location based is just your overall your, your overall team like just using the strength of the team and knowing you know what to play off of mm -hmm. what now as you're playing through the mo the monsters that you encounter are ten, are about the same ones. They'll, those don't change. So their mm -hmm. abilities, you you kind of start figuring out their abilities. Yeah. And you're like, all right, we got to take out this one to the right right away, and then we'll focus on the other two. Now when you get into combat, on the boss, and then well, it's turn based. Okay, turn based. So it's turn not based. like you don't have to. And it's and it's by pattern. and it's by chance as well. Okay. So let's say it's four. You got to get four either a hit or a miss four times. So you got to get the hit four times to get the max damage for that weapon. Mm -hmm. If not, if you get only two out of the four, it scales down. Mm -hmm. 
So it's it's definitely chance. Kind chance of reminds me of like the RuneScape uh, like and, system. And, the, and I've and at least I haven't looked into it. I'm trying to play blind in the game right now. Mm-hmm. Um, at least what I'm thinking is that the luck, your your character's luck increases your hit chance. Probably like that or item drop. And then I I was surprised there was I had a weapon a real a rare weapon that was breakable and I didn't realize it was gonna break. Oh, no. Within my third fight because it was only one chance. Either mm-hmm. I got it, if it either it got the hit chance or it missed. It once it missed, it broke. The weapon mm-hmm. broke. Yeah. So then I was like, my character was like, oh, now I got to equip a different weapon. like, And that takes a whole turn. Oh, a weapon. So, yeah, so that threw us That's off for a bit. Can every weapon break? Like, Not every weapon. So it'll it'll give you, when you pick up the weapon, it'll give you a little icon on the top left of the weapon mm-hmm. that'll say, you know, it'll, it won't say it, but it'll show that it's breakable. Right. Huh. But it's fun. It's it's definitely fun. I'm hooked on it. Hopefully I could beat it. Beat at least the first scenario soon. Gotcha. So that's uh, for the king. You can get that on Game Pass. I've been also playing something on Game Pass. I actually just jumped into it last night. Um, it's called Moonlighter. You mm-hmm. probably that's heard out. You, you got it. You have played Steam, it, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, I'm only a couple hours in. I won't say too much about it because I'm as I'm very early. But uh, the sort of gimmick is that you are a shopkeeper slash adventurer. And you are a shopkeeper by day. You usually go out into the procedurally generated dungeon, uh, which is right outside of town at night. You try to progress further into the dungeon. Um, I played it probably for an hour and a half. I got pretty close to beating the first boss, but essentially I would just clear a few rooms, get a few items, you open up shop, instantly you get customers, you kind of, you set a price, uh, an emoticon will up- appear above their head, whether they're like, wow, great price, or fair price, I'll buy it, or like a begrudging looking face, whether they'll, they'll buy it, but there's a shitty price, and then up like the mad face where they just don't buy it. So you have to set all these items at the price that you know, you want to get a good re- reputation, so you want it to be a fair price. It's kind of the ideal thing. You don't want to sell it too cheap. Um, and this process only takes like two, three minutes with the people coming in, looking at the items you got. Then you get a nice rundown of everything you sold. Then you can go into town and open up a blacksmith shop, open up a potion shop, and then uh, you're a lot more well equipped to go into the dungeons. Um, and it's got charming music like a nice little piano some you know uh, almost legend of zelda-esque yeah yeah it's definitely got some zelda vibes like mixed with shoegazy kind of just like eh, this is nice it's temperate it's like you go outside and like a nice summer night and there's fireflies buzzing around but then there's also a big monster that's probably gonna eat you if you don't have your sword hell yeah gets that kind of atmosphere that's a good synopsis of it um so i'm really just I think it's it's charming me. It's fun. It's um, like I said, you know, they're just such a great service. Xbox Game Pass. We talk about something new. We play on it almost every week. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah. Did, what, what was your experience with it? It was fun. I only played it for like maybe forty five minutes on Steam or so because I bought it on sale and then I started drinking. And it's a bad combination of an attention span. <laughs> you and that alcohol. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was great. It was good though. It was, it was fun. I got. Uh, is the first weapon you get the broom? Is that like a... <laughs> so the, that's like basically the pre... That's like, um, I would say the tutorials and you're using like you look, look, using the broom mm-hmm. and then you are pretty much guaranteed... You are guaranteed to die, I think. And then your grandfather... Um, or not die, faint, or whatever. And the, they, the dungeon spits you back out. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of... The game is like it has roguelike em- elements. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't actually die, but you if you do die in the dungeon without escaping quick enough, you, you lose all... Or, most of the weapons that and items that you've picked up um you do get to select you have five inventory slots that i think are safe that you won't lose um Mm. you lose everything in your backpack right Uh, it was good though i mean exactly like that i I want to play some more into it yeah definitely check it out some more man because like Mm. i feel like i'm barely scratching the surface um there's Mm. It, there's a long progression ahead. I can see it, maybe it's going to get a little grindy. It seems like some of the weapons and stuff take a lot of items, but maybe I, I'm just still learning how to optimize. I think it's like a Binding of Isaac feel almost as well, which I still want to check out. You like kind of going to go in. It gave me that overall because it's got the top-down view. Mm-hmm. Like the dungeons kind of seem like that almost. But. Oh, for sure. The mm-hmm. dungeons, yeah, that's true. The, the, there's Each room has typically like you know a way to go right, left, up, or down, mm-hmm. and you don't really know what you're going to get. Um so yeah, I've been playing that. I also picked up Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Maker 2, super fun. Uh, it's like really incredible, actually. I mean, it's 
I've probably played six or seven user created levels, some really good, some like just, just super creative. Um, they really introduce a lot of like puzzle mechanics, which can be hit or miss mm -hmm. in, in Mario games where you're kind of trying to, you know, hit the, throw the pow, the pow block so that the uh, big, what are the gray guys called that smash you? Thwomps. 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 Exactly. So the thwomp uh -uh. Will, <laughs> will land on it, and then you can go through the door, or they'll, you know, there'll be a level where you're not allowed to jump. There was one that was pretty cool where you just sort of had to be very analytical of the environment and find ways for enemies to boost you up. or mm. And so there's a story mode in this, which, uh, you know, the concept of it is the Peach's Castle gets fucked up somehow and you have to pretty much build it from scratch um, the only way you do that is through coin <laughs> so it actually gives a utility to the coins that i don't think the series has ever had where it's always just been a nice chiming sound um not very important to the game at all but now there's a hundred missions in the game uh from what i've heard i've already completed like 30 ish of the story missions mm -hmm. uh, and they take they're pretty short. They're not like a, a core Mario game level. They take anywhere from, well, they're, they're a couple minutes long. Uh, some of the more puzzly ones can, can take a little longer. Mm -hmm. But they do a cool job of introducing new mechanics and giving you ideas for when you do venture into the creative mode. Like almost every level has some sort of thing that none of the other levels have because there's just so many different ways to be creative. Um, it's super fun, like, transitioning from Super Mario Bros. 3 aesthetic to Super Mario World to, to uh, new Super Mario Bros. U. It kind of just keeps things fresh. You don't really know which one you're going to be going into. Mm -hmm. I've liked that aspect of it a lot. So, like, for me, it's going to be a game that I'm just going to... It's just a... Keep, like, they're going to add more to it, and you keep always going back to it. Exactly. Because it's always got yeah. something to share. Did oh. you see the... Uh, Vertical. It's like one one world one one, but it's totally vertical. Um, no, was that a uh, like a? It's on. Yeah, I was watching a video um, on YouTube where uh, they're playing it, and it's just totally like vertical, and it's just the whole stage. But they have little clips you have to hang on to, so it's the regular one one. You jump onto the pipes. There's this little hook thing that you can jump into. It'll grab you, and you have to use Mario to swing up and kind of like do the whole level if you're just climbing a mountain. Mm -hmm. It looks very very frustrating. Huh. Um, just one more thing that I just thought of. Uh, a neat thing about it is that, you know, famous game developers can make their own Mario levels. Like uh, the Celeste uh, developer, who was the Celeste was made almost entirely by boy one guy whose mm -hmm. name is escaping me, Matt something I believe. But he made a few levels in it, and he, you know, he tweeted out these are the codes. You can go check them out. That's pretty and, sweet. Yeah, just. The, the fact community. that yeah, the, the community and just the fact that everybody has access to these tools that can make potentially a Mario masterpiece. It's the I think it's a just kind of an invaluable game to have that's going to just be infinite replayability for you know years. So, do you think it could be the Mario game to end all Mario games with how much creativity and levels people can make with this game? So I don't think you're gonna like. <laughs> Until the server shut down. Well, I, hopefully that will be a long, long yeah. time. But uh, I, I think that you can't beat kind of like the maybe a professional authored experience. Like I don't think that somebody's going to make something on the level of a Mario Galaxy or a, a Mario Odyssey within this. But if I was stuck on a desert island with one, it might be this. Yeah, and so. good Wi-Fi. And good Wi-Fi. Wi wi <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, you, you are able to download levels. Um, even if you uh, to play offline later, mm -hmm. and, you, and you can play the story mode offline. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. And can you use it through? Um, have you tried your Nintendo phone app yet? Does that have connectivity with it? Or? I have not tried that yet. Um, that's so cool. I, I mean, once they integrate that, I'm sure it'll be. If they're doing like what they did with Smash Bros. with the stage builder, mm -hmm. and they can do that too. That'll only make it better and more accessible for more people. Yeah, and I'm been itching to get on the uh, creative train and make my own level. I haven't yet. It's never been my thing. I've never been like a, somebody that was going to create their own stage in Tony Hawk or whatever. I think I tried that. I, actually, I did do that. Because it, yeah. Do you make a bunch of ramps that would go super, super high? No, I just fall? remember making pools. Remember the pools? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> now that I think about it. Yeah. I was just like, I never made levels. Yes, I did. <laughs> I made the pools. <laughs> yeah. I used to um, love those. Same yeah. Thing, like Halo Forge and. Oh, oh my God. Those. <sighs> so many hours. Yeah. So many hours. So, speaking of, yeah, I just haven't had. 
a lot of hours to sit down mm-hmm. and make something that I'm proud of because I want to do that. I don't want to just half-ass it. I want to like have a theme, pick the right music, and like share that shit. Get the and, slopes. Yeah. Somebody had made a like a functioning calculator within Mario Maker. No, oh my God. Wow. How do you how would how do you do Just that through ridiculous means and turtle shells and triggers and <laughs> that's I have to watch the video that sounds and, insane yeah it's, it's stupid is it was that in one or two it's in Mario Maker two okay oh my god but the it can future. only it can only add seven seven maximum seven plus seven I think oh my god then what's the point <laughs> <laughs> and on that's a, crazy uh, that's cool though on a related note there was this fun story I saw about apparently somebody has recreated. The Super Mario World suite of Super Mario Maker 2 into Little Big Planet 3 somehow. So there's a Super Mario Maker game that you can play on PlayStation 3 if you haven't upgraded yet. Uh, huh. Which just that sounds bonkers. It's interesting. I, I, um, it sounds almost too ridiculous to be true, but <laughs> what the I saw it on the internet, so it has to be true. It has to be. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna buy Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's mainly what I've been playing. I did finish Guacamelee 2. Yes. I, I, th- I know. I think last week I said I was like, I was a little like, this feels a little samey to the first one. I will say that they really ratcheted it up, and like the they, the, the game takes off in a pretty serious way Uh, i do think it was a little long i don't think i thought the story was maybe a little too silly for its own good but it wrapped up really nicely the challenge wrapped up ramped up considerably to where i was talking about last week last week you're like i love it it's great and then uh as soon as we got home i'm pretty sure last week you text everyone you're like okay this is getting pretty hard (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think that's the case yeah because it really uh from a platforming level i think they took a lot of inspiration from like celeste um, Even watching you and Tyler play Celeste was just blowing my mind because just the, it, the, it's all about pattern memorization, but the timing and the jumps, I would have just been like, nope, nope, that's just, it's just a lot too of, much to do. A lot of practice, oh a lot God. of dies. I think I, yeah, there was, I would text Tyler my death count for like level five, like, yeah, I died 317 times. It's, that's crazy. <laughs> that is a yet. lot of, at least you can start right back up. At least there's no like lag and you have to like sit and run yes, back. Yes, and like, that's one thing that Guacamelee does too, which is so smart. It's just like, fuck game over screens unless you're Mario, I guess then it's okay. Not an Odyssey. Oh, well, maybe a Maker. Do they have True. a game over? They do in Maker, lives. but it's you get it's like per each level, so mm-hmm. if you, it's very rare that you die f- six times to one level. That's cool. Um, so, uh, anybody else got anything they want to mention before we move on to cruise and forward news? And mm-hmm. uh, I finished Trover Saves the Universe. Oh yeah, I think I was talking about that last week. Give me your thoughts. Um, just an overall good game. It's funny. It's silly. Got all the collectibles that you can get nice. on my first run through. Um, and then the way it ends, if you did miss anything, you pretty much have to like replay the whole game over. And I'm pretty sure one of the, the trophies is it wants you to play the whole game over again. Mm. So in order to get that platinum, we got to play funny. through it all again. Is it a platformer? I probably asked this last week. but um, yeah, it's like a 3D platformer type, mostly. I don't know why. Um, I just imagine it being kind of like a Nickelodeon PS1 game when I think of it. Oh, mind. I wish. That'd be really cool. I'd love to see a skin <laughs> of that. Like the Rugrats game. Yeah, Rugrats exactly. Tower, which is blocky. I play oh, the shit God. out of that game. Oh, somebody should mod Trover Saves the Universe and take all the music out, but put all the music from Search of Reptar from PlayStation oh 1 God. in that. That'd be great. You play that, Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> Rugrats Search for Reptar. <laughs> I'm a, you know what? I'm out <laughs> to try and see if I pick it up. <laughs> Added to Remember my, that level where, collection. where you were running from the duck and you were Chucky? Or oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> yeah, is that the one where you uh, you rode Spike? You had to ride Spike and he fucking controlled yeah. like a Resident Evil kid one character with the tank controls. Maybe it was really bad. It's been a while. Some of them, like, <laughs> yeah, the music for parts of that game were like so eerie. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, it was probably um, the Mother's Bach, uh, Mark Mother's Bach, who um, I think was in. Was he in Devo? I think he's a really well-known like uh, composer. Composer for, for for games and cartoons and stuff. Um, so he yeah. was really good. That soundtrack is like, it just captures the show because it sounds like the same soundtrack from the show, but like mm-hmm. it is a little creepy because some of those episodes were a little like depending. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want like the flush down the drain one. I'm that scared the shit out of me. The watermelon in your tummy. If you eat with seed, you're gonna explode. That was a weird one. Mr. Fiend, that's spooky. 
Mm. Wow, I want to go home and watch Rugrats. I did like the episode where uh, Stu uh, hits his head and thinks he's a baby and can talk to the babies. And then at the very end of the episode, turn him back. They end up putting him on the roof and he gets hit by like, I don't know, like a window or something. I think it was like one of the things on the roof and he gets hit and he falls down and he screams. He goes, <laughs> and, <he's just> like, <laughs> and he turns back into a, a human, turns back into an adult. And he's like, dude, why am I wearing a diaper? He's like, ah, oh, Stu, you were role playing, man. That was actually really, really creepy now that I think yeah. about it. Uh, those Nickelodeon 90 shows were... Uh, Something else, man. Yeah, they were getting getting away with some stuff that maybe oh, wouldn't, wouldn't be so get away with a bull today. <laughs> this All is for right. after you sprouts go to bed. So, I don't know. I love how Trover Saves the Universe brought us to that. But uh, it is now time for... Cruise it for news and... Thank you, Tyler. We have uh, another slow news week. No surprise. We're kind of in the midsummer uh, chill out after E3, but we did have some stuff. Um, I think we reported on, maybe it wasn't last week, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, famous, very popular, millions of subscribers, uh, Dr. Disrespect Twitch streamer, got banned from Twitch for walking into the bathroom at E3 and continuing with his live stream. Um, He was (laughs) unbanned after two weeks. He didn't have apology an apology for a few days, uh, and then I'm going to actually read his apology, which he put out as his real life character's Twitter, a real life per- not person. I forget his name. Uh, blah blah blah. What is his real name? Mm-hmm. Disrespect Doctor. I have no clue. I've never so, really like listened to him much anyway. It's a guy something. Yeah, it's guy yeah. something. Uh, anyway, so he put this out on his uh, IRL IRL. Twitter account. We were walking around filming at E3. We clearly weren't thinking about the law slash repercussions of filming in the bathroom because honestly it wasn't in our mind frame at the time. He wrote, explaining that he was committed to staying authentic to Doc's edgy character being his first IRL stream ever. We were so into E3 IRL journey that we became a little blind in what's okay and what's not okay. We had no ill intentions and I feel that it was pretty obvious if you watched the entire thing. We wanted to capture an adventure. Unfortunately, we took that adventure into the wrong areas, unaware of the legality surrounding it. On behalf of the Dr. Disrespect brand, I apologize for this. Blah, blah, blah. He said, uh, going on, I'm very lucky to be considered an influential person in the entertainment space. Believe me, I don't take it for granted. We are working on a lot of things that take time that hopefully will continue to elevate the brand and gaming entertainment as a whole into the mainstream space. So, um... He came out with this apology, which, you know, to be fair, I thought was a pretty decent apology. Like, it was not something that I was very mad at him for in the first place. Sure, it was uncool, but, like, I don't know. I think there was a little bit of overreaction to it. Unless he was up in my toilet uh, space just being like... Yeah, exactly. I did did actually see the video, but I don't think he was... I think one of the biggest things in the video was, I think, he caught, like, a little kid in the video. Oh, (laughs) Oh, God. Like, like so, it was just I, under, I understand. I understand. He, was, he, was, he wasn't. He was in character. I understood it. Poor, poor judgment. Poor you know? judgment. You, you are always trying to be edgy and. Hey man, what up with that little pee pee? Have, have the what <laughs> that little pee pee do, buddy? <laughs> I'm Doctor Disrespect. Subscribe to me on Twitch. Ask your parents to use the Wi-Fi. So. Yeah, I don't think you went that far, but uh, yeah, I hope not. I hope not too. But <laughs> anyway, know, then you'd get they, mad. They, they, like, cut, they cut him off before it got that so far. <laughs> So he got unbanned after two weeks, and um, he and Jason Schreier now have a little Twitter beef going on. Um, Who's Jason Schreier? Jason Schreier is uh, the – he works for Kotaku.com. Uh, he's the probably most connected person in the industry that is oftentimes delivering scoops and uh, exposés on either uh, develop, developer conditions and – um, you know, anonymous sources that are very accurate most of or all of the time, seemingly. Uh, he's very trusted. Um, he's like the go-to leak confirmation guy, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, pretty much. Um, and he's very well respected. He's got a, a good book uh, that I read last year called Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, which is like each chapter is about the like tumultuous struggle of developing a specific game. I recommend it. Mm. Um, but anyway, so Doctor just, the, he, there was some uh, reporting out of Kotaku, the site he works with, that didn't necessarily show uh, Dr. Disrespect in the greatest light, although it was very mild as far as, like, posturing goes. Like, I mean, like, he he did not go 
to a place where he deserved this type of treatment. So anyway, this is what Doctors Disrespect treated, tweeted. Uh, hey guys, Jason Schreier here. Analytics show that Kotaku is on the uprise, averaging three to five likes per tweet compared to one to three likes one year ago. I also wrote a book about video games and I, something like, uh, and not to brag, but it's very popular around the office. And then I hate myself. And then a picture of him with like kind of an unflattering picture of him with his like receding hairline, which he had like mentioned earlier in a tweet. So I don't know. I, I kind of was like, you already, you just put out this sincere apology and now you're just going to go out and be a dick to like one of like somebody that's done nothing bad to you and do is two different twitter accounts that's dr disrespect <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the character that's, that's, that's not, not guy guy beam <laughs> and uh you know he i wish i had jason's responses here they were they were pretty uh good um did they just pretty much start twitter beef and they were just going back and forth like, yeah i mean you're they, dumb and ugly no you're dumb and ugly Tyler, you getting us the, the the replies i okay while he looks it up um so but, but honestly while he looks it up I honestly think that I think we, if we read into it too much, uh, it's it, we're feeding into it. I think he just kind of trying to drum up some more, you know, talk uh, talk around the, the doctor with disrespect name, you know. Like yeah, he's going if back it's his to character. he's go he's just going back to his character, you yeah. know. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. I just I do think yeah. I mean I hear you, and I don't want to give undue publicity where it shouldn't shouldn't go, but I also feel like you know the just being a the, the part that bothers me is that I hate myself line. If it, if he didn't say that, it would have been fine. But just the fact that he inserted that little like the little stab. extra bit of bullying, it really just came off to me as like. Yeah, it's, it's also hard to draw the line there too. When it's like, okay, cool, I'm being a dick, but it's like, oh, he's got if he's got that edgy kind of like brandy humor. At least you didn't say, oh, I'm gonna kill myself because of my stupid looking hairline. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, yeah. So I think I think he just went full blown character. His his character, Doctor Disrespect, and you know, I think I I don't really follow him. Um, a good friend of mine does. Yeah, I think he's all about Doctor Disrespect. He watches the videos all the time. I hear he's funny and so, I hear he's talented. So he's, I mean, like I I haven't checked him out much. So I think this is who what the he's character is. A lot more is, popular you know? than we are that's for sure oh yeah definitely. i think <laughs> i think i think we need to go on go online do some cyber bullying and i think we might maybe, get so. maybe get, so get tyler on a couple rounds of rocket league get them all fired up russell is jimmy's and then we'll I get keep, him on this we'll I get keep, him on the case i keep hearing this tyler this different version of tyler on rocket league and oh I still my god it. you've ever seen ever seen tyler really really sweaty outside yeah imagine that but like 10 degrees in the hotter weather and really really agitated because both your shoes won't fit because that's a very disgruntled feeling okay but then so, and then so then, that's, then that's you get rocket, him on rocket league that, that's rocket league tyler mm -hmm. you got so mad the light blew out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much shit it just generates all the it took, took all the light I, I need to i need to see this this rocket league tyler if it see how how disgruntled he gets been playing any rocket league i know we're on the news now but no i haven't no rocket league recently wrong answer <laughs> all right moving on um so we'll stay tuned to that you know exchange and whatever i'm on jason schreier's team uh mario maker 2 i already said that um so i know that Ooh. kenny and i like nba 2k20 do you happen to see who was uh announced yes. as the cover athlete slash legendary edition cover athlete so i don't care and i care about the the regular cover uh i really don't understand anthony davis being the cover athlete like what did he do this season? Yeah, no, he just went to a brand new team. He went to all. a brand new team, didn't play half the year because he didn't want to. Exactly. Like he, yeah, like the, the way he handled wanting to leave the Pelicans. Like I, I even feel even more like, damn, like why is he the cover athlete? Like true. I would have rather had Kawhi Leonard. Oh, yeah. oh, oh d definitely. Kawhi, Kawhi should have been the cover athlete. Kawhi, they dropped, they, they dropped the ball there. Like yeah. like Kawhi, Desu, Kawhi. like Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard. Holy shit! I gotta watch sports. <laughs> Damn. Now he, uh, yeah, I thought that Dwayne Wade was on the cover. He's on the, the $100 legend. edition. The legend. Yeah. So now they're doing this thing every that, year. That cover is beautiful. I haven't actually seen what it looks like. You haven't like seen it? It no, has like the Miami vibe in the background, and he's like looking towards the uh, towards that scenery. It just looks amazing. Hmm. Like the the Anthony Davis one is like a generic jersey, him holding a ball, looking looking straight. Like they didn't even know they didn't know what team he was gonna be on. Give him a generic jersey. Like no. Like, wow. I think he's gonna be. Uh, I think I read that he's that he will be in the Laker jersey for the cover. Which, oh, they're gonna update it. Which they did the same thing a couple years ago, actually, when Kyrie went to the Celtics. Mm. Yeah. They they updated it. Yep. Yeah. So get those now because those but, but that, that D Wade cover looks amazing. 
And what do you get with the 40 extra bucks? You get some, some VC? A bunch of VC and some, most likely they're, they're, I know they're really going heavy into their um, my, that my team mode. You know where you collect cards of legendary players and their different oh, tiers, that like sounds diamond. Sounds like what I heard about FIFA. Exactly, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. the FIFA for two K. So yeah, <sighs> right. so you'll get a, just a bunch of stuff for either your my player for your my team. I hope I get a MySpace um, deep with my purchase. Right. <laughs> can log on and update my profile. <laughs> Be careful the deleting old profiles. Shit. Um. So I actually heard some stuff about FIFA. I'm like derail you know, the conversation a little bit here, but like about how actually the microtransactions and loot box bullshit is worse in sports games than really oh, any other genre. It seems like it's yes. awful. In like, I can honestly games. tell you, I don't do the FIFA, but my best friend, he does. He he literally, I'll sit there and I'll be like, how much have you spent so far? And there was a point in time, I think he spent four times what he, spent, what he spent on the game. So this game was 60 bucks. He spent almost 200 and something dollars. That's yeah. hard. I can see, especially but when they're wagging in your like, face all the time. And it's always like, they're always like, oh, this this new new version of the player is dropping so you know yeah. like <laughs> he's got a different color like, jersey and then the thing is is that with fifa it's all about the chemistry too so then not you can't just take 99 players 99 player cards and think that they're going to be great you could take a similar team that's like off by a couple points you know but have the chemistry and they'll play better Hmm. You know, so they have the chemistry factor in FIFA. So you get players that go along with the chemistry of what, uh, the formation you're trying to play. So you end up investing so much money just to get a competitive team. So you could play on the weekend matches that give you top tier coins so you don't have to spend money, but you still end up spending money. Fuck that bullshit. You're going to spend money to spend <laughs> it's money. A, it's a fucking rabbit hole, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's like... You know, I think last a couple or was it last week we were talking about EA. Yeah, um, I think I don't think I was quite harsh enough on them for for some of the bullshit (laughs) that they uh, do. Like, I mean, there's the Battlefront thing that they made right on, which I think it's supposed to be a pretty good game. I actually just bought it for six dollars and twenty four cents. That's a steal. I I got it. I got it too. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I texted everybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you know, Battlefront, that cheap. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, So. Yeah, and I actually got called out on it by somebody at work. He's like, towing the EA corporate line. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, no, it's six bucks, dude. Get over it. You're just making you can't play Darth Vader. No, but so after that, I looked into it a little bit more, and And I can can still see both sides of the argument, but they, they... Got some. They've been fucking up. In, some in, ways. in all reality, they are they are straightforward. They're not hiding behind they're hiding behind anything when it comes to the sports games. It's up front and personal. Mm-hmm. Like you can buy these packs for players. Like you could play to you could pay to win, right right away. They won. It's and why are, why are people uh, mad about this? Do you have any theories? So is at least so because for, so I at guess. least when it comes to Madden. There, people aren't really mad to it because there's such a community behind the ultimate team mm. that nobody's complaining. Yeah, just like but, Magic the Gathering exactly. or any like, other like because trading it's a, based, it's like, or a, like almost like a, it's an economy, a trade, a trading card based economy. Game, yeah, you know, like and let's say they'll buy that, you know, and the odds aren't too bad. Like sometimes certain weekends, the odds are great. You'll get high tier cards. No matter what packs you pay for, right? that's pretty cool. And then they no, turn. No, it's not, Anthony. They turn. I like getting cool rare cards. <laughs> they, they turn. <laughs> then they turn around and they'll go on the subreddits because I'm like now I'm following the subreddit group. That's like, part of the hype too. Because so, then you see somebody like, so oh, I just got this SSR poll, and, and, like, oh. and they'll start checking to see what is it running for, is on both PS4 and Xbox One. What is what? What is it like that? For? What that card player's card? Can yeah. you sell them? You sell them not for money but for coin. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So then. You'll get the coin, and then he, I, you'll see players who no longer have to buy pat, uh, buy buy them with money because they they flipped uh, Michael Vick ninety five like Michael Vick for five million coin. Wow! Did he come with the dog? No, not the pitbulls. Ah. No, no pitbulls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like that. It's like a gamble. Like some people, they're like they'll make the initial buy. They'll buy the game and then maybe spend sixty bucks, and then from there will not spend another dollar. If they're because good at playing the if game, if they're good mm-hmm. at playing the game and playing the the auction house and auction, you know, auctioning off your cards or quick selling, like setting them up for getting bought real quick, real fast. Because once you start figuring out what prices the cards are going for, you can get your card sold within twenty four hours. 
Huh. You know? In its own economy, it seems exactly. like. Exactly. Oh, completely. And it's Hardcore a, eBay. And it's a huge following. And then you get the metas. The game will come out. And within the first month, people are like, oh, the meta is um, you want a 4-3 defense. So now everybody's mm-hmm. just buying anything that yep. fits a 4-3 defense. Exactly you know? what Hearthstone turned into. Exactly. The first is like once that full core set was out and a month or two went by, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. this is the deck to run. You got to run uh, Face Hunter. You yeah. need this card, this card, this card. Exactly. So the, the gaming gets so serious. So the uh, and the, uh, but then but you want to get legend rank, you've got to get serious. So yeah, then, right? so then they do different things though. So then they'll run a three on three ranked matches. So you could hop in and you bring in your offense, and then I'll bring in my defense. And Anthony just comes in to join as the head coach. He doesn't bring anything except for the jerseys, right? But we bring our teams to face against these other three people. So there, these are ranked matches as well. So there's like different ways to enjoy your team your team building you know like let's say you you talk you and your buddy are playing right and you're like oh we're we're only gonna we're not gonna do rank matches one-on-one we're only gonna do the three v threes i'm gonna focus on offense you're gonna focus on defense and matter on the matter on ultimate team so whenever i get good defensive players i'm trading to you for good offensive players and we're building this and we're playing only three on three ranked matches so you see like there's different aspects some people will only do that some people will do the, the <laughs> You're losing a come. little. Oh, yeah. No, no. There's so, so you're basically saying people are turning this into a co-op. So it's like, say yes. I'm built in Magic, or like a card rules or whatever for Magic, for example. It's like I'm building a blue deck and you're building a red deck. We both open packs. You get a bunch of, what did I say? I'm building red, you're blue. You get a bunch of good red cards. I give you all my good blue cards for the red yep. cards. So now exactly. I have a better red deck and you have a better blue deck. Exactly. And so I guess like my whole point that I was starting with this <laughs> is that why are, I guess... Y- you give a great answer, though. It's the community because people. Yeah. There's a lot of people that play Madden almost exclusively, or exclusively, and so if they're spending a hundred, two hundred bucks a year on it, it's justified to them. So maybe that's why it just doesn't come off as egregious because a lot of people that play sports games, that's all they, that's all they play. And you know what they do do well? Do they do. make it so that <laughs> you can actually be good without spending a dollar? You just, spend you just have to hundreds grind. Of hours. Yeah. You just have to grind. Like I can honestly say, my first time jumping into Ultimate Team, I spent twenty bucks. Twenty bucks total, not just one shot. Twenty bucks total. I made it to having a ninety-two overall team. Out I mean, a hundred. Yeah, out of ninety-nine. So, and that I put in hours into that game. Well, mm-hmm. How many hours? I want to say at least one hundred and twenty. Okay, like, that's you know. a lot. So overall, within like the eight months that I played it, I even was able to unlock the Sean Taylor card, which was you had to do 20 different objectives. Like you had a pass for more than 100,000 passing yards. So like it was insane. Okay, okay, like, okay, I have one important question. What's up? When you play, when you're getting these cards, do you actually get to play a real game with them? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Just yeah, so sure. you add them to your lineup. You add them to your lineup. So I can honestly say when I got Sean Taylor, Two years ago in Madden, what is it, 18? I was the happiest man. First game I played with that man on my defense, it, it was I made somebody fumble. Yep, instantly, mm-hmm. instantly they they took a slant coming up the left. Sean Taylor came down, cracked him, fumble. I was like, yup. I'm gonna love this game now. As bad as it is, when you do pull a very like good character, no. or human in the Madden terms, <laughs> it you do get this. It's this really, and you feel guilty too because you know you're enjoying it just a little too much. It's just that like, oh yeah, now I can be good at the game. In your own little world, you're like, now it's gonna come together. And then you wait a week and you're like, what the hell did I spend all that time for? I'm just as bad as it was last week. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just such a, a roller coaster. Yeah, but, but it's mm. that they they that's how they hide behind the 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 amount of money that mm-hmm. you end up paying for packs because they also make it accessible that you can play and not have to spend a dollar and still be just as good as the people. It's just gonna take are. you way longer. It's gonna yes. take you longer. And they do also they try their best to gauge it so when you search for a match, you're you're gonna get placed against somebody around your talent level, you know whatever rank you're at. So, you know, that person might have a slightly better team, but you'll be able to take on somebody that doesn't didn't spend money. That's good. You know? All That's right. We had a great, All right, let's great sports talk. <laughs> we really did. Sports Moving talk. on to our next uh, little Me. story. Apex Legends Season 2 ranked mode details. I think what's going on is that there is a bronze tier, silver tier, gold tier, platinum tier, and apex predator tier, if yeah. I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, bronze matches are free to play. Uh, during the matches, you get one 
battle point or was it rank point um, for each kill. Um, you get like three for a top 10 finish, five for a top five finish, seven for a top three and 12 for a top for a win. Um, and then if you want to compete in, the, so, so you, you rank up from the bronze tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like four ranks per tier. Uh, and then you go to the silver one, same story there. Uh, but if you want to play in the silver one, not only do you have to rank up through the bronze uh, tiers, but then you have to pay battle points in order to play them, mm-hmm. in order to rank up. And then, so silver tiers cost a certain amount, and then gold tiers more so. And then if you finally get in the apex predator one, um, you know, it's it's taken like, I think it's five per match to even try it. Sorry, that was literally all from memory from something I read like 10 minutes or 10 minutes before the show. But um, Apex Legends, I think this is sounds pretty cool. I hope that they're able to keep the, the weights not long enough for the people that are playing on like high tiers because it's a hot, 60 people per, you know, match. I think it sounds neat. I, I think if they can come up with some cool skins and it sounds like they've added some pretty unique and... Um, diverse heroes lately that have kind of switched up the overall gameplay a lot. I know Mm -hmm. Watson, I think, was the name of the character that was kind of how to have these cool electric abilities. That's cool. And um, I I think we should start playing it again, really, because I've been... I never played a match. I've never played it. (laughs) You never played it? Okay, it was just me and Tyler. We played it for a couple weeks. We were, like, real into it. He even brought over his TV and we played... um, at my house one night, like uh, it's good stuff. Land party stuff. Yeah, it was That's, a lot of fun. Let me down and get back into it. Out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. You up for I'll, it? I'll jump in. All right, let's do it. Apex <laughs> Legends season two, baby. Ah. We're getting to be predators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hide your kids. I'm gonna be a predator. <laughs> Whose fanny pack am I jumping on? Cause I, I, su- <laughs> I suck at these games. <laughs> It's okay. We'll be at the same level. I'm bad at. Is it like so? It's first person. Too. Also, we're interchangeable. You're pretty much. You don't. You doesn't matter which one hops in the date. Yeah. It's me. I will say that the last time I did play a match, I got a win. That's awesome. I was very he happy. Did, he did mention and you're that. You're like, like, all right, I'm good. Episode good three now. or four. He mentioned that that he got the win last time. Yeah. Yep. I, th- I try to remember what episodes people reference. <laughs> <laughs> which episode everybody said everything. everything. <laughs> I try. I try. It's I try. good. I get, I I'm glad you're doing it because my little goldfish bowl of a brain with the memory it has, it just kind of like. Yeah, I remember that. I'm just thinking about it. It feels so silky smooth in my memory. Just like <laughs> just like Titanfall Ooh. did, sliding around, shooting people. I wish I got silky smooth. Titanfall. It's got I don't know. That's man. why it feels so good when you jump in and you get a win. I was like, ah. yeah, when you jump in and get a win. <laughs> See, you, you get the hit. You're like, then oh. it's also so frustrating when you jump in, you get five items, and then you somebody shoots you in the yeah, head, yeah, and yeah. you gotta wait another three minutes to get. But it's pretty quick. Okay. But uh, so, so is, yeah. it, is it Overwatch style? Yeah, is it download it. So, it. so, so it's I'll think it a today. mixture between Overwatch <laughs> and Fortnite because there are heroes that you play as, sort mm-hmm. of like in Overwatch. They're not quite as class based, so I think they all have the same running speed, um, same the same like hitbox and stuff. They're actually, they might be slightly different hitbox, but um, so they'll have a. Is there a passive ability for everybody? Yeah, everyone pretty much has a passive ability. Then everyone has a power, and then everyone has a different ultimate. Ultimate, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, mm. it's it's always teams of three. Okay. So... 3v3? No, 3v3, 3v3, 3v3. So there's six. There's three, oh, okay, 20 six. teams of three. Holy crap. Oh, so it's 60-player match. Yeah. Um, and you drop on an island, just like Fortnite. Is there Mario um, Maker there to play? I don't think there's Ain't Mario Maker there. <laughs> Um, oh, haha! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and then, so it, it's got some siege vibes too, I guess. Mm, more, I did like siege. Uh, well, not not as just just because of the heroes. Yeah, the, 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 heroes. the abilities are more akin to that than maybe in Overwatch, uh, but it's more kind of got the I'm silly weird. vibe of Overwatch. Really silly and cool stuff. Yeah, are there boobs. No, um, no, not, no, not really. No. Oh, man, that's going to be a hard sell. Characters aren't that sexy. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a hard sell. I'll, I'll check it out. He might, not, he might not install it today. <laughs> um, it's okay. Thank you for being honest. I'll still I'll still check it out. Anyway, that's Apex Legends Season 2 details. I think I'm going to hop back into that. Um, so I had to edit this story, or somebody else took the liberty of doing that. Thank you, Google Drive, for allowing that. PlayStation Plus, this is... Uh, our next month's offering, we're going to get 
Detroit Become Human, as well as Horizon. I think it's this no, no, one. Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. Yeah. Okay, so Heavy Rain is is included with the deluxe edition of Detroit Become yeah. Human. So it's technically Detroit Become Human, um, and then you get Heavy Rain, which is yeah. you know mm-hmm. it's an old ass game at this point. And I then haven't played it. I I recommend. I don't recommend. Well, it. If it's a good game. If you don't know how the story ends, play it. But if you already know the story, don't bother. All right, cool. You played it? It's. I remember someone in high school was super, super into it back when it was big and first came out, and she was like telling me all the cool points about it, but I don't really remember any of the other ones. I just remember you're yelling for your I'll son. Die. Jason! Jason! <laughs> Jason! Around a mall. And that's it. I might end up playing it. So. That's like all just play really Detroit, dude. I mean, like, Detroit, I think, is actually maybe a lesser game overall, but it's just really impressive visually. And I think that it uh, has some of the best motion capture that's ever been done in a game. I think the story, while it was a little cliched and predictable at times, was highly changeable based on your choices and for such a game with high production values that's super impressive i know that like the games press tends to like hate on david cage a lot who's the kind of producer or he's the writer and director of the game yeah he got a lot of slack when that first came out yeah um he's got a big ego he's had so he said some stupid things um like like this dude what's the name the one behind fable Oh, uh, no, like Peter, Peter Molyneux? Molyneux no. no, I think he, he, he's just a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Molyneux, I actually saw a hilarious video where um, Dan Reichert from Giant Bomb was showing him different fart apps on his iPhone. <laughs> and they were just very seriously critiquing on what was the best one. And it was pretty great. That's awesome. I'm yeah. all, oh, man. Um, but anyway, I think fart with him. there were some rumors that there was like sexism and racism at, at this studio. It's a French studio. Um, uh-huh. And that, like, people had to call him Sun God or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. Like some silly shit. Oh, wow. um, Would you guys still talk to me if I try to walk around here? If we became a big studio, like, call me Sun God. <laughs> I guess like, it's Kenny again. <laughs> I don't know. I am the man. I it, guess it depended on the context and how. Wiley must call me MK God. <laughs> <laughs> Like Elder God. Elder. <laughs> yeah. Sounded how uh, excited you were in the voice, and then we can gauge it from there. Like, uh, how much are you enjoying what's it? What's the other one called? <laughs> Dang it! It's Hor- Horizon. Uh, Horizon Turbo, Turbo Chase. Okay, which is beep, like beep, broom, a, broom. an arcade racer, which I think okay. as people have been saying, it's pretty good. People are like, "Oh, these games suck." Because it was Pro, Evol- Pro Evolution Soccer, the Konami soccer game, and then <laughs> last minute it was changed to Detroit Become Human. You know, a AAA. Sony exclusive. A lot more people are going to be happy with that. No, it was a good switch. We don't know why that happened. We can only speculate. Um, but yeah, so maybe they ran out of crappy indie games to try to speculate that ones. people complained enough and they switched it. Exactly. You think that that's it? I Probably. think so. Probably. I think. I think even even one of the things, one of the trailers I saw for the for the PlayStation um, lineup, I was like, somebody was like, yeah, very underwhelming. I was like, okay. Yeah. They I'm saw like, that because, and they were like, we gotta change this, man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but I saw it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna download Pro, Pro Evolution, Evolution Soccer yeah. 2019. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I tend to download almost all the all the free games. So I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, this one's not. I at least add them to the library so yeah. I can download them later. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no. I not this time. Stuff. I enjoy FIFA. I don't need this one. <clears throat> so somebody made a note of the Steam Summer Sale. I don't care, but it's <laughs> on. Steam Summer Sale is here. <laughs> and what is this last all summer? Or uh, nope, yeah, only it's a few weeks. Till like the ninth. Oh, okay. Pretty sure. Yeah, but it's but, always always fucking amazing. Oh, it's those, disgusting. Those There's so many sales. sales. I'm glad I don't have a gaming computer because y- Yakuza be Zero is like four. Hundred sales, four bucks. Yakuza Zero is ten bucks. Uh, what was another good one I saw. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is like twenty four dollars. Um, not is it Odyssey or Origins? The Egyptian. Both. Oh, Egyptian. Uh, that's Origins. Origins. Yeah, that's like twenty four bucks. Ridiculously cheap. Um, a whole bunch of other really good ones that are super super on sale. Man, I've been thinking about Origins lately and just how I miss it. It's really. Go back and play it. I might, and even though like I just beat it not too long ago, it really is one of my all time favorites. I'm gonna try it out. Um. All right, guys. That wraps up. The things that I have for this week. Uh, who did the homework? I, I know that um, it was kind of a big assignment this week. I really wanted you to, to work on that Kirby's Adventure. I, uh, my I, dog ate my homework. 
I studied, and I gotta say, I uh, yeah, my, my Kirby ate my homework. <laughs> it's fun. the game starts off, and it's just like add one, I add another, I, and you make a big ball. It's Kirby, and I was like, what the, what the NES? You can do that. Huh. And then it just starts off with a Kirby's Adventure. All right. As usual, a bunch of slackers here this week. Um, <laughs> nobody did the homework. Uh, I can't talk because neither did I. Apologize. We'll get back to you with our hot, breaking impressions of Kirby's Adventure next week. As always. It's like the Game Boy Advance game. You've played Nightmare in Dreamland. It's the same thing. Anybody got any last last words before we uh, cut this one off? I've had a booger in my nose, and it's a really bothering me. Sorry. Last, last remarks. <laughs> Good job, guys. Famous, famous last words. Okay. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll let you know. I got Thank the book next week. Check us out. Check us out on Say YouTube. hi to your mother for me. We're also on podcast services. Uh, it's really the best way to listen to the show. You don't have to see our ugly faces. No, no you, get, you gotta, you gotta see We us. are on Podcast Addict as well as iTunes. L- look for us there. You don't have the whole time to watch us like you've been doing because you're still watching this part of the video. Thank you so much. Uh, We'll be back next week. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Stay level. See ya. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the podcast. (laughs) I'm going to guess.